Mathematical Modeling, Second Order Linear Difference Equations. We've dealt with the first order equations. The first order linear difference equations involves defining any particular term of a sequence using a preceding term. Now in the second order difference equations we define any term of a sequence by two of the preceding terms. So in this case we have xn plus 2, xn plus 1 and xn. These two only differ from the fact that this one is equal to 0 and this one is equal to a constant. The first one is called a homogeneous equation because it's equal to 0 and that's what the Fibonacci sequence is. And the second one is non-homogeneous because it's equal to a constant. We're only going to deal with the homogeneous being an elementary course, the non-homogeneous type is quite complex to solve, but we will just touch on it and show what method is used without actually going into an example. So here's a formula. What is called the characteristic equation of the homogeneous second order difference equation is lambda squared plus alpha times lambda plus beta equals zero. Where if you have a look, it's a quadratic equation. Alpha is the coefficient of the xn plus one term and beta, the constant, is the coefficient of the xn term. Then one further, uh, one further formula we have a formula for the actual nth term of the sequence. C1 lambda 1 to the n plus C2 lambda 2 to the n. And what we do is we go about substituting the first two terms in because we have to be given two terms. Not necessarily the first two, but we have to be given two terms of the linear difference second order equation if we are going to be able to solve it. So here's an example. Recursive formula for a sequence given as, right, a0 is 0, a1 is 1, and an plus 1 plus an plus, an plus 2 plus an plus 1 minus twice an equals 0. So it's homogeneous. This is a's where that is x, but we can easily draw the parallels, I'm sure. Now the questions. Give the characteristic equation for the sequence. Well, there's the characteristic equation. Give the formula for successive terms of the sequence. Well, there's the formula. We get to use the characteristic equation to find the value of lambda. And that'll give us the formula. By substituting terms given, determine the numerical values of C1 and C2. Well, we know that a0 is 0 and A1 is 1. So we're going to substitute them into our formula and we'll end up with simultaneous equations to solve for C1 and C2. We'll then substitute those back into the formula and use the formula to find X2. Right, so, number one, there's our characteristic equation for the sequence. Lambda squared plus lambda minus 2 equals 0. The reason being, lambda squared plus alpha lambda, well, alpha is 1, plus beta, well, beta is negative 2. So there we have it. We have to give the characteristic equation. There it is. Now it says 2, give the formula for successive terms of the sequence. Well, we're going to solve that quadratic equation. And we're going to take those values of lambda and substitute back into this formula. The order does not matter. It does not matter which you choose as lambda 1 and which you choose as lambda 2. Now we need to find the values of C1 and C2, number 3. So we're going to substitute 
zero zero one one into this equation. Zero zero one one. That gives us two equations when simplified in C1 and C2 and we can solve those simultaneously. Pretty straightforward grade 9 stuff so we won't do it now we'll just give the answers. So now we've completed number 3. We have found the numerical values. Now we need to use the formula to find x2 or a2. So we need to take those and substitute them back into our formula so we can go further to find A2. So there we are, we've taken those two values, substituted into the formula, and there it is there. That's Xn or An. Now we substitute 2 for N and solve for X2, negative 1. We haven't finished yet because it says confirm your answer using the sequence formula. So we're now going to use the sequence formula. We know A0 is 0, A1 is 1, and then we're going to use those by substitution into here to find the value of An plus 2. And we get x2 equaling negative 1, confirming our answer from the first part. So either way, we'll get the same answer. Let's have a brief look at the non-homogeneous equation. So there, this is the same equation as we had previously, except that we have a minus 3 in there. We've slotted in... A constant. The steps. We need to write the equation back in the same form as the homogeneous equation was but with a 3 there. So we've moved the 3 across. Now we, we leave off the 3 and solve the homogeneous equation. So we leave that 3 out, put it north and solve that homogeneous equation. And we've already solved that in the previous example, so here's the solution there. Now, this is where we actually start taking a bit of strain. We augment the solution, we add to it by some function f of n. So some function in n, we add on to the end of this formula for a n. There it is there. Now at this stage you need mathematical experience to be able to tell what shape this function is, what form that function is, whether it's an exponential or a first degree polynomial, second degree polynomial, but that takes quite a bit of experience to work out. So, when substituted into this here, we should get 3. So we need to work out what sort of function goes there, and then we substitute it into this, equate to 3, and solve. Well beyond this course. So, some pretty searching questions can be asked involving this sort of equation, all of which require clear thinking and trial and error investigation. What it means, in other words, is observation, working out patterns. Let's take an example. There we're given, we talk, we're talking about the Fibonacci sequence, 1, 1, 2, 3, etc. 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, 3 plus 2 is 5, and so on. We have to find the value of this expression and that expression there. Well, let's first list the sequence. So there's the sequence there. Now, we have to find the value of that. So I'm going to take some successive terms. I've 
taken f4 when n is 3 because it's fn plus 1 and we substitute in and there's our answer negative 1. Now I'm going to take f6 times f4. Oh, I'm going to take this one on this side first. f5 times f3. And I get 1. Then I do the f6 on that side. f7, f8, f9. Have a look at the workings of those. All I'm doing is substituting these relevant terms into that formula there. Now notice that when n is starts with, the with an odd number, notice this is fn plus 1, which means n must be 3, 5, 7. We end up with a negative 1. But when n is an even number, we end up with positive. So once again, when n is odd, we end up with negative. But when I say when n is not odd, remember that is n plus 1. So n is 3, n is 5, n is 7. When n is even, that's n plus 1. So when n is 4, 6, 8, we get a positive. So we know this formula is always going to end up being 1 or negative 1. And it really depends on whether n is, pos is odd or even. So when n is odd, we get negative 1. And when it's when n is even, we get 1. So, in fact, there we have it. Negative 1 to the n. There's the formula. There's the answer to that, the value of it. Let's have a look at the second part. Now, I've done this pretty quickly, but you'll need to do some calculation. But... The first term, we just have f1. This is the second term. And if we add those two together, squares, we must get 2. And so on. I've just used that formula for the successive terms. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That's why this goes as far as f9 squared. Now we need to try to look at a pattern here. At the moment, they look like pretty random numbers. Let's put them next to the original terms. And just have a look for a moment to see if you can see a pattern. Look at any term and then the next term and look back at that one. 1, 1, 1. 1, 2, 2. 2, 3, 6. 3, 5, 15. 5, 8, 40. So there's the pattern. There's no end to the variety of different patterns you could end up with. And some of them have no patterns. And you have to be brave enough to say this has no pattern. But be very careful because often what looks like no pattern is one. And this is just an example of one of the many types of questions that could be asked just to test you, to get your reasoning powers. So the formula. f1 squared plus f2 squared is equal to 1 term 1 times term 2. When we go to there, it's equal to term 3 times term 4. So the third sum is term 3 times term 4. So therefore the nth sum is term n times the next one up. And so there we are. Fn times Fn plus 1. And there's the pattern.